All right, this is the AP testing guide. So in this testing guide, we have um, a, a checklist, required documents, and a test demo. You, uh, we're gonna go over your e-ticket, the steps to take before exam day, what to do on exam day, and then um, about your scores, okay? So the first thing you're gonna get is an e-ticket. You're gonna receive this by email two days before the test. On the exam day, you have to have this e-ticket number in order to take the exam. You'll get a unique ticket for each exam you're registered for. You can also download the e-ticket on myap.collegeboard.org with your login. You should be getting emails from the College Board. If you're not getting any emails from the College Board, you need to go to myapcollegeboard.org and make sure that your address is correct, okay? Your e-ticket is just for you and no one else can use it, okay? If you share it with someone, you could lose your chance to take the AP test. This is how you're going to log on 30 minutes before your exam. Our exam is on Tuesday, May 12th at Pacific time, 1 p.m., okay? 1 p.m. is our exam. So again, 1 p.m. Tuesday, May 12th is the AP Human Geography exam. We will be logging on at, you will be logging on at 1230, okay? So mark that on your calendars. You have to log on at 1230 to register for the exam, okay? So Pacific time, 1 p.m., 1230 is when you log on. Human Geography, Tuesday, May 12th. Okay, if you, if you have any problems with this exam, there's a June makeup date, which I'm not going to discuss because I don't think you're gonna need it. But if you do have problems, especially technical issues, like if your Wi-Fi goes out, then um, there is a June makeup and I can tell you about that if that happens after the case, okay? Um, this, year, this year, the test is not gonna be more difficult than in the previous years, okay? It's not graded on a curve. Um, it's still possible to get a three, four, five, even if you don't complete all parts of the question, you can still get a five, okay? Most important is that you submit it before your time runs out. If you don't submit before your time runs out, then that's the exam. You're not gonna be able to receive anything higher than a one, and um, you are not gonna get a retake, okay? Um, so very, very important that um, you uh, create a good, um, environment for yourself and because they know that it's hard to have a good testing environment for a long time it's a it's a much shorter exam okay so only two questions right um, and if you get something lower than a three right lower than a three then I get to review your score and make sure that it's been scored accurately okay so you can kind of have a contest if you get lower than a three okay the three ways to Three ways to submit your answer are copy and paste a type response, attach a type response, or hand write it and take a photo, okay? I'm gonna give you the specifics on each one of these three. First, copy and paste. You have to use either Google Docs, um, Microsoft Word, Notes, or some sort of word processing app to type your answer. You may not type into the actual AP exam. Then you are going to cut and paste your response. Remember, you will be typing your AP ID, which is on your, your ticket, and your initials at the top of your response, okay? Then when the timer is counting down and has five minutes remaining, you're just going to copy and paste out of your either Google Doc or Microsoft Word Doc or whatever, and then you're gonna paste it into the exam. Again, you're not, you can't type into the exam. You have to type into a separate program and then cut and paste, okay? You have to use, uh, you're gonna have to use two windows, right? You're gonna have to have either Chrome or uh, Firefox, Safari, or Edge, or your browser to display the test questions and the timer, and then paste. And then in your other window, you're gonna use Google Doc, Microsoft Word, Notes, et cetera. If you have a laptop or a desktop, this is the option that I would recommend for you. Copy and paste, okay? If you have a laptop or a desktop. Now, additionally, you can attach a document. Again, you need to have two windows open, one with the test and then the other with either Google Docs, Microsoft Word, et cetera. Once you finish writing your answer, then you are going to either download it off of Google Docs into a PDF or save it as a Microsoft Word file, and then you're going to upload that um, onto the uh, AP exam site, okay? 
again, same thing. You want to do your uploading with about five minutes to go. Because if you don't submit, remember, if you don't submit, you're going to get a, a one on the exam and there's no retakes for that. So most important to submit, even if you feel like you, you know, maybe could have written more. The third choice. This is best if you have a phone, okay? If you have a phone, you're going to write out your um, answer with pen and paper and making sure that you have your APID number plus your initials at the top of every page. You write it out with a pen or pencil. It, they said you can use a pencil, but it, and if you use a pen, it's gotta be dark. Then you take a picture of your response and you uh, attach it via photo. This is best if you're gonna take the exam with a phone, okay? So best if you're gonna take the exam with a phone. Don't worry about music theory, world language, your uh, world language teacher can go over with you. Accommodations, I'm not gonna talk about. Requesting a makeup, I'm not gonna talk about. Okay, the exam screen will, oh, if you need a makeup, you can always ask me and I'll help you afterwards, okay? But uh, you have to do it within 48 hours of the original date. Okay, exam screen will guide students step-by-step -step on test day from the moment they click their e-ticket. Most students will be able to navigate the test using only info on the slides. Unexpected events may occur. If you have any, um, uh, any issues, you know, um, you're, you're gonna have to let them know, but you ge generally you wanna do your technology check ahead of time, okay? So before, these are five steps to take before exam day. I'm gonna do a brief pause right now and I'd like you to type one into the chat if you're totally clear. And I'd like you to type a question if you have a question. Hey, there are no questions, so I'm gonna go on. Five steps to take before exam day. Review your contact info. Make sure you're getting re emails from the AP program. Check your tech, okay? Choose and prepare your device and make sure that um, you're going to be able to use that for the AP exam. Practice submitting a response with this collegecb.org AP demo, and I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? Gather what you need and then download and print. For our exam, you need no additional documents. All you need would be like your um, notebook if you have it, your textbook, that's fine. Receive your exam confirmation and e-ticket emails. That you should be getting 48 hours before the exam, so I think on Sunday you're going to get those. Okay, those are the five steps. So review your contact information, make sure you can do that on College Board, okay? Um, if you are gonna take it on a computer and you're using Google Docs, right? If you have the Grammarly plugin, you have to disable, or you have to remove Grammarly before the, the um, test. I use Grammarly, so I would have to do that, right? You have to remove the plugin before you take the test, right? Okay, um, if you're gonna do a, a phone, then you're most likely going to be handwriting your response. If you're doing a tablet, you can either type or handwrite. If you're using a laptop or a desktop, definitely, um, I would say cut and paste is going to be the easiest one, okay? Um, if you're going to use Google Docs and you want to attach instead of cutting and pasting it, then you have to understand how to attach a Google Doc. And I will show you how to do that later in this presentation, okay? If you're gonna write it, use white, lined or unlined paper, eight and a half by 11 standard size, and then either a number two pencil or blue and black ink, okay? Um, maximum number of pages per question is five, right? So you'll need 10 pages maximum, and then you write your AP ID and initials at the top of each page, okay? Um, so practicing submitting a response, I'm gonna go over how to do that, okay? We need, this is extra materials you would need. We don't need anything for AP Human Geography. Okay, internet searches will waste your time and put you at risk of an exam violation. The more time you spend searching the web, the less you spend answering the question. Internet-based facts, research, and opinions are not relevant to the AP exam and will not raise your scores. Copying from websites, social media, or online forums is considered plagiarism and will be detected and scores canceled. You can use these, class notes, study guides, textbooks, other classroom resources, previous assignments or assessments, calculators, you don't need that for us, okay, or um, shared notes, right? These are fine. You can have all these. What you cannot do is go into a chat room during the exam. You actually can't talk to anyone during the exam, okay? So you're absolutely not supposed to be exchanging information. Now, I can tell you that the thing AP is most worried about is online forums, okay? They're most worried about students participating in online forums to share the question and share answers during the exam. If they find those, I do believe they will crack down on those and that's when they would look up your IP address, okay? 
So you should be getting your confirmation email by May 4th. You should have already gotten that. And you should uh, be getting your e-ticket two days before the exam. So you need to be checking your email. Um, there's a checklist of things to do before the AP exam, and I'll show you how to access that. Okay. And then on the day of the exam, 30 minutes before time, you check in using your e-ticket. You complete all your identity info, and then you just wait for it to log in, right? And what do you do while you're waiting? Just review your notes, get in a good mind frame, send to yourself, and then you're, you're off to go. Okay, make sure that when you are testing, you um, have a charged device, you remove all your distract distractions, you put on do not disturb or quiet settings on your, on your um, other devices, and make sure you tell everyone who lives in your, in your household, your parents, your um, siblings, whoever, your grandparents, whoever, you're taking an AP exam. This is a once a year thing, okay? Um, you don't get a second shot, right? Have them not play online video games. Have them not watch their Netflix, right? You don't want, it, you don't want them taking up your bandwidth. It's a short exam, right? You're only gonna be on the computer for a total of the 30 minutes of waiting, and then I think it's another 45 to an hour, so an hour and a half. I think everyone can help accommodate you if you ask them nicely in your household, right, that you have to take this exam. So um, make sure that you have everything with you when it's time to take the test, okay? Um, so you, you may not incorporate work from, uh, which is not your own. You may not provide, receive aid from anyone to identify students attempting to receive help through the web, phone, or social media. Sophisticated detection technologies and processes will be applied. Most techniques will remain confidential to maximize their effectiveness. In other words, College Board has hired a, a, a security system to make sure that um, students don't plagiarize, right, and don't, and don't discuss this uh, while it's happening. So uh, every answer is going to be scanned by a plagiarism de detection software and shared with me as well, okay? If you are found violating exam security, you will face severe consequences, including having your names reported to colleges, right, for attempted cheating and having your exam scores canceled. Just don't cheat, okay? Just take, take whatever you get on the exam, uh, your score, and I really do think that everyone um, has the chance to pass for this class, okay? Check into your exam 30 minutes ahead of time. You're gonna enter that number right there, and then you'll have a, a countdown until the exam starts. And then you do one question at a time, okay? So when you submit your first question, even if you submit early, you will not have uh, extra time to work on the second question. It will count down all the way to the end of the first question, okay? Uh, you won't be able to move on to the second question until the time for the first has fully elapsed. Once the time for the first is uh, finished, the second question will automatically appear. Once you submit a question, you can't go back. You manage your time. When it says time left to submit work, it'll be in black until it gets to five minutes or below. Once it hits five minutes, then you really want to stop and start uploading, okay? Um, right? You can still earn a five even if you don't finish your response. If you don't submit your response on time, you don't get any credit. And if your thing is taking a while to upload, then you wanna make sure you start early, okay? Losing track of time and not submitting a response before time runs out is not an acceptable reason for requesting a makeup test, okay? So you're either going to attach a file, attach a photo, or paste your work here. So all you, it doesn't have a place where you can type, all you can do is cut and paste. What could go wrong, okay? Um, if you accidentally close the browser, your device crashes, or you temporarily lose your internet access, you can quickly click your exam e-ticket again and return to the exam. You can continue the exam. If you feel at the end that you this temporary disruption negatively impacted your performance, you can request an approval um, uh, to take the makeup exam, and that's in June. Okay. During the exam, don't refresh your browser or hit the back button, and don't call any customer service centers. Okay. Uh, scores, as usual, they're scored one through five, okay? Um, and then you can ask uh, before June 20th what college or university uh, you'd like to send your scores to, okay? And you can get credit at a lot of schools, including uh, UC system, right? Three, four, or five, they will give you um, credit. Stay safe and healthy from the College Board. Okay, check your tech. Make sure you're using either Chrome, Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Edge. You may not use Internet Explorer. That's it. That's the whole presentation. I'm going to upload this document. It has some links in it, uh, and it will be on Classroom after this class is over. 
So this is essential info for the AP exam. I'm not gonna go over it right now, but I am gonna show you the exam demo. So if you click on this link, this brings you to the exam demo, okay? And this is what the exam demo looks like. It says, enter your AP ID. For this exam demo, you can enter practice. So when you're actually logging in, this is what you're gonna do, okay? You, this is where you would um, enter your um, AP ID, but since this is practice, you type in practice, okay? And then it takes you to, uh, and it's gonna say your exam has started, right? So now you're gonna enter patient and just do it, right? Just try this at home, okay? Um, and uh, then you can practice submitting your responses, okay? So I highly recommend everyone do that, right? Now, if you do plan to do a Google Doc and for whatever reason you want to download that doc and then, and then attach it, the way that you do that is you go to file on a Google Doc, file, and then you go to download and you should download it as a PDF, okay? And then that will pop into your downloads folder. And then from your downloads folder, then you can upload it to uh, AP, okay? So that's how to submit a Google Doc as an, a PDF attachment. And remember, if you're doing the Google Doc, you wanna have your ID number and your initials at the very top up here, okay? So let's get ready conceptually. What you're gonna see on the actual questions are words like define, identify, and discuss, okay? This is what it means. Define means one to two sentences, it's a definition, and it really should be in your own words. They are going to be scanning for plagiarism, so if they're asking for definitions, they're gonna be um, looking for you to put it into your own words, okay? Identify means one to two sentences stating facts, making connections, clear to the point and straightforward, okay? Identify. Finally, discuss. This means three to six sentences using examples to illustrate your point going into depth and detail, okay? Define, identify, and discuss. Label your answers. Each part, A, and then you answer A, B, and then you answer B, and C, then you answer C. Now, what we've been doing all year is outlining our answers. I would also recommend outlining your answers. And if you want to, you can outline it on paper and then type, right? Or you can outline it on a separate Google Doc. Do not submit your outline. You're only submitting your answers. Do not submit outlines, only answers. This year, we have covered films, field trips, readings, debates, Socratic seminars. We've covered so much. Uh, so many examples all year, right? Discuss the examples, the ones that you remember. Field trips, films, case studies, Socratic seminars, small group debates, articles, textbook, lecture. Use the examples you know to demonstrate your points, okay? It's very important to do that on the AP exam. Use examples that you know. Okay, I'm going to go over the two FRQs for Unit 5. One of them is women in agriculture, and the other one is uh, the Green Revolution. So the first one, women in agriculture, asks you to identify a country where more than 75% of women in the labor force are active in agriculture. So you remember how I made you memorize the world map? Yeah. So people who didn't memorize the world map have a harder time identifying these countries. They also have to be able to read a map. You have to be able to say, okay, the black here is what they're talking about. Uh, it's a country where 75% of women in the labor force are active in agriculture. So you have to be able to identify one of the countries on this uh, map that's in black, right? And if you're able to do that, you get the point there. So the, this is the list of countries. Most people chose a country in sub-Saharan Africa, um, you know, whether that be Somalia or Madagascar or whatever, okay? Describe one obstacle to um, equality and empowerment for each of the following, economic, cultural, and political, and identify and explain one impact of empowering women. So this is really about how uh, women are facing um, obstacles, right, uh, for equality and empowerment. So economic obstacles that women are facing. All of these are correct answers. Okay, each one is worth one point. The one that I saw most frequently was women are frequently denied loans or cannot afford tuition or fees. Uh, lack funding to provide school. So lack of education is a big economic, uh, lack of money for education is a big economic um, drawback. 
a big um, cultural obstacle is women have traditional gender roles, so that's one, or high fertility rates raising children uh, hinders women's ability to achieve equality. All these other are, are correct answers, but these are the two that I saw mo most students put. The political obstacle, laws and governing policies preventing women from acquiring land tenure or owning land, or women may lack access to political process like voting or being in government, okay? So are lacking political power. So those are the three major obstacles, so one point for each of those. Finally, these are um, the impacts, and you get one point for the uh, identification and one point for explanation. Uh, gaining land ownership or tenure, improvement in personal wealth, improvement in political or social status, improvement in food security, improvement in quality of life or demographic changes. And a lot of people, um, students wrote, changing social values leads to um, decreased uh, TFR, lower birth rates, et cetera. There are also negative possible impacts like social tension or negative impacts on the family, right? So people who believe in traditional roles uh, reject female farmers as business people. Okay, next question, define the term green revolution, explain the principal agricultural practices and technologies, two regions, and then two political, social, or cultural conditions necessary for the success or um, two conditions that limit long-term success. Okay, so part A, A1 is um, green revolution, uh, you have to mention the use of new agricultural practices and the gain in yield and productivity that resulted from new agricultural practices. Okay, for part A2, um, the technologies or practices, you want to refer to fertilizer, irrigation, insecticide, herbicide, mechanical machinery, hybridization, crossbreeding, also GMO. So you have to ha have two of those. Uh, for three, you have to have two regions, okay? And the regions are either South Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, South America, Central America, uh, North Africa, and you can mention Mexico, China, um, Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, or India. But you cannot mention uh, more than one in one region. Identify and discuss two political, social, or cultural conditions necessary for success, okay? So you get one point for the ID and one point for the um, explanation, and there's two, so it's four points total. Um, and really what we're looking for here is money, right? Credit and banks so that people can uh, finance getting these technologies. Right, political stability and receptive political environment. Right, you have to have a good lead, good leadership, and you also have to have acceptance of these practices. Right, and acceptance of Western role of scientific based knowledge. Okay, so acceptance of the practices. Um, additionally, the things that limit the success. Right, you get one point for the ID and one point for the discussion, and those are things like um, loss of uh, biodiversity um, and a discussion about how the practices tend to um, decrease biodiversity, also co growing costs of fertilizer, herbicides, insecticides, et cetera, and also a uh, steady decline in soil quality. Uh, that, those were the answers that I generally saw from students in this class, okay. If you have any questions about either of those FRQs, go ahead and write them now. If not, please type one into the chat. Okay, for today, you're gonna to collaborate with your classmates to answer one FRQ with a high level of detail. And this is the FRQ. There's two photos. Identify the grain crops shown in each photo, part A. Discuss two economic differences between subsistence and commercial agriculture. Identify one environmental impact resulting from the type of agriculture shown in, shown in photo Y. And identify one environmental impact resulting from the type of agriculture shown in photo Z. Okay. Identify the grain crop shown. Y is wet, is, uh, sorry, <laughs> wet patty rice. Uh, it says wet or patty rice, but really just rice, right? That's the answer. Z, wheat, okay, this is wheat. Now, also acceptable is oats, barley, rye, flax, millet. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Uh, canola or, uh, or dry rice, but no, wheat, really, that's what we're looking at, wheat. Um, but any of these would earn points. Okay, the differences, the main differences are the amount of labor or mechanization and technology and then economic purpose, right? So subsistence is high input of human labor, right, and low tech, and then commercial is low input of human labor and high tech and machinery. The other is economic purpose, okay, uh, family or for your house, and then the other is profit drive for trade. 
You also could mention any of these. These are all correct as well. Small plots versus large farms, LDCs versus MDCs, uh, low level of uh, investment, high level of investment, whatever. Inputs, right? Percentage of labor in agriculture, all that stuff, okay? All right. C, identify one environmental impact resulting from Y from this. Habitat loss, water quality, increased wetlands, changes to natural systems by landscape modification, disease, soil quality, and air quality. Any of those could work. I'm guessing most students put habitat loss and water quality. For D, identify one environmental impact resulting from the type of agriculture shown in uh, D. You could either put air quality, water quality, soil quality, modified biodiversity, or water availability. My guess is most people mentioned air quality. Okay, let's take a look 